please welcome to the stage Scottsdale Chamber President and CEO, Mr. Mark Stanton. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Scottsdale Community. Here's my drama music. This is where I do something really cool, so stand by. Um, thank you all for joining us this morning for Scottsdale Forward. It's a pleasure to welcome you here. This is the Scottsdale Area Chamber of Commerce uh, premier signature event focusing on economic development, the vision of Scottsdale, and all those important issues that we're facing uh, as a business community and as a community at large. And we're very excited to have you here today. And I'd like to give a special thank you to uh, President Chris Haynes of uh, Scottsdale Community College for hosting us today. And also, how about that breakfast from Chartwell's uh, restaurant here at Scottsdale Community College? How was that? Good? Also, I'd like to recognize uh, some of our elected council members that are here with us today. I believe we have uh, Guy Phillips is here today, Linda Milhaven, Solange Whitehead, Suzanne Clapp, and Virginia Corte. Thank you all for being here very much. <laughs> Appreciate that. And of course, this event would not be possible without our generous uh, and very gracious sponsors that have been willing to help us put the program together. So I'd like to thank our executive sponsor, APS. Thank you very much, APS. Our corporate sponsors, ASU. Cox Business, SRP, and Wells Fargo. Thank you very, very much. Also, our breakfast sponsors today, Caliber, CenturyLink, Saks Tierney, and Western State Bank. Thank you all very, very much. Yeah, absolutely. And then we have, uh, we have several in-kind sponsors that are helping us out, and I'd like to thank uh, Matt Young Photography. Matt, say hi to everybody. He's gonna be snapping photos all morning. Uh, Pro Run Media Productions, Rija, thank you very much and your team for being here. Uh, Scottsdale Community College, of course, and the Scottsdale Video Network in the city of Scottsdale, thank you for your participation. Look for this being broadcast on Channel 11. Um, also, uh, I think you may be wondering about our, our setting here. So some people speculated that we may be doing a new chamber cooking show. Some, <laughs> some people may think this is uh, one of Rob Millar's uh, uh, homes that he's got around the country. Uh, but in, in point of fact, uh, we're very proud to share the stage with Scottsdale Community College School of Film and Theater production. Uh, if you may have seen the flyer out in the, in the foyer, uh, this is a production of a play uh, called Crimes of the Heart by Beth Henley. Uh, it's a drama uh, set in the 1970s and actually is a uh, multi-award winning uh, drama including a Pulitzer Prize and uh, the performances are wrapping up this weekend there's a performance on Friday at 7:30 and on Saturday at 2 30 and all the performances are free and so if you get the chance uh, uh, it's getting great reviews and I have to tell you if you you can see the set uh, pretty well but it is amazing the detail that they have up here including the bottled soda pop that's in the refrigerator which is awesome so uh, try to make that and congratulations on that production um, so to kick off today's program, it's my honor to introduce a good friend of, of the Scottsdale Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, especially our Businesses Unified for Scottsdale School program. I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Stephanie Fuji, Vice President of Scottsdale Community College. Stephanie. Thank you, good morning. My name is Stephanie Fuji, and I am the Vice President of Academic Affairs here at Scottsdale Community College. On behalf of SCC and College President Chris Haynes, I would like to welcome you to SCC and to Scottsdale Forward. SCC is one of the 10 Maricopa Community Colleges and is the only public community college in the nation that resides on sovereign land. We are the guest of the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community and we are honored to be here and thank the community for graciously hosting us for almost nearly 50 years. We are pleased to be having this important community event on our campus and know you have an informative and purposeful morning ahead. Enjoy, learn, and thank you for being here and supporting Scottsdale Forward. Welcome to SCC. Thank you very much, Stephanie, appreciate that. Um, and speaking of the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community, uh, we have a great strategic partnership and friendship with the, uh, with the sovereign land, and it is my honor to introduce uh, President Martin Javier. President. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank President Stanton for the invite this morning. I'd also like to thank uh, the Vice President uh, Fuji for recognizing the community and the location of the college here within the boundaries of our community. 
like she stated, it's been located here, I think, from since about 1969. Um, you know the uh, discussion today about uh, economic development here uh, this morning. Uh, you know, that topic uh, in our community has been a, a kind of a hot topic for quite some time. Uh, and and I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, economic development still within our community, uh, there's still members that don't feel like, let's just say we're moving too fast. And uh, I know that there's other individuals that we talk to that come through the community that say, why do I see so much barren land that's within your community that could be developed that's, you know, prime property? I'll tell you, back in the, uh, I believe it was in the probably 90s, the community uh, with the involvement of our, our, all of our members of our community uh, kind of took a, a little poll on what they wanted our community to look like in the future. And I'll tell you, a lot of the development that's happened came from uh, getting that information from our membership. And I'll, I'll let you know, currently we're going through that same process as a community going out to find out what, what do you want the community to look like. Our community has changed for us that live here in the community, and I'm sure a lot of you that have driven through the community have seen a lot of changes that you've seen in our community. I look at the set when I came in, and I just think about, uh, you know, growing up, during this time frame, and uh, I, I, I don't know how many of you, I look at the refrigerator, growing up, we always called it the ice box, and you know, today I still call it the ice box, and my wife gets mad at me, it's not the ice box, or even when we go, go into Scottsdale or Mesa, I say, let's go to town, and she goes, we're living in town, we don't have to go to town anymore, <laughs> but, but I just tell you, things have changed, development, you know, I'll tell you, development is important to the community. It's going to be important to find out, you know, what our membership feel as far as development uh, continuing in our community. And I'm sure it will. Just what type of development I think is, is going to be important. So I wanted to just take this time to welcome you here to the community. Again, I thank the college for hosting the event this morning and have a great, great morning. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you, President Javier. And I should also say that I, too, also call this a uh, ice box on occasion, so don't feel bad about that. Um, uh, it's, uh, next up, we're going to welcome our Director of Economic Development for the City of Scottsdale, Rob Millar. Now, supposedly, he stayed out all night and came directly from happy hour into the evening, so I don't know what... How he's going to present now? He's uh, he's uh, he's a pleasure to work with. We work very uh, Scottsdale Area Community College works very or, uh, Chamber of Commerce works very closely with the uh, Economic Development Office. We meet on several programs and activities, including business attraction and retention. And his team is doing an amazing job. So it's my pleasure to introduce Rob Millar, Director of Economic Development. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is very coincidental that I'm wearing the exact same tie and shirt. Um, I do own more than one tie and shirt, I promise you. Um, I'm going to advance that because I'm just, it's really awkward. Um, <laughs> uh, well, good morning again. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Some of you may not know that Mark Stan and I have been friends for nearly 20 years, and only for the past couple of years have we had the opportunity to work together as his role as CEO and president, and mine as Economic Development Director. And, and it's fun because we have a lot of the same synergies. We have a passion for our community and what we do, and, and we have a similar, what I'll say, interesting sense of humor. So I've enjoyed working with Mark and his team. And, and real quick, when you were driving in this morning, how many of you really took it in about how lucky we are to live here? I mean, I, I, you see the sun coming in up over the superstitions, and, and Rachel Sacco, I saw here a second ago, um, her and her team doing a great job at Experience Gospel, driving 9 million visitors a year to our community. And we get to live here every day. We don't have to save up to live here. We get to be here every day. And if anybody's going to spring training games, um, you know how fortunate we are. So thank you to Rachel and her team for everything she does. Uh, I want to thank the Chamber for putting this event on. It is an event we look forward to every year. Economic development is by far my favorite subject, um, and I think it's uh, very important. So this is a good opportunity for us to pause and to think about things that we're doing to advance the economic development in our community. So I want to thank the Chamber and their team. I would also like to recognize our City Council and City Manager for their ongoing leadership in making sure that economic development stays at the forefront of our commu community and of our conversations and their, and their leadership in that regard. And this, this is also a, a regional and a statewide effort 
the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, the Arizona Commerce Authority, our part and parcel to what we do, as well as APS and SRP. We couldn't do what we do without this amazing team, and we're very fortunate, so I'd like to thank everybody. And final, one final thank you. I call them Team Six. That's our economic development team. We're six, and we're strong. And you may not know everybody, you may not see them, but they're working hard every day, and I want to thank them for their time. Mayor Lane was not able to make it here today due to a scheduling conflict, but this is one of his favorite events, and I know he's going to look forward to hearing from all of you some of the feedback and conversations we're having here today. All right, so I realize this is Scottsdale forward, underscore the forward part, but just like a slingshot, sometimes we have to pull back a little bit before we can advance forward. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that we've been focusing on since we were here 365 days ago. It seems like just yesterday, but it's been about a year. So I wanna talk a little bit about that first. So it's been five years. I don't know about you, but time is going by really fast for me as I get a little bit older. So five years ago isn't that long ago, but that is when the city council adopted our current City of Scottsdale Economic Development Strategic Plan. And since then, we, we've, been, we've been very strategic on some of the things we've done. And I'm pleased to let you know that because of that very surgical plan and our approach, we've had some very su successful results. Since the plan was approved, this, the City of Scottsdale has seen a direct economic impact of $34.7 million with nearly 6,000 new jobs added to our community. In addition to driving new business, it's important that we focus on our existing businesses in this community. So we're spending more and more resources to meet with our companies to find out what can we do to support them, to make them successful. And to that end, we have met with over 450 companies over the past five years. And Scottsdale continues to see a steady increase in our high wage targeted occupations. We have had helped attract 14 new companies to our community just this fiscal year. These companies have absorbed 754 real, Class A real estate in our community, which is about 1,500 new jobs at an average salary of over $68,000. And I'll say that the good news is continuing in, into this year. Uh, that momentum is carrying in. We've all talked about the economy and what's going to happen with the economy slowing down a little bit. Um, we're not seeing that yet, but uh, we anticipate there will. So we're, we're taking advantage of our strong pipeline and some of the things that we've been working on. With several months still remaining in this fiscal year, and I'll say that in terms of economic development in Scottsdale, our third and fourth quarters tend to be our strongest. Uh, typically, that's when we see companies do their, their, their most mo uh, moves. So we've got a couple months to really get this number up. But we've had 405 jobs to date with an average salary of $92,000. That is extremely high for targeted wage. So that's, that's impressive, and we'd like to see that continue. The uh, Scottsdale continues to, to outpace the Phoenix metro area in terms of retail, office, and industrial. How we rank in the Phoenix metro area is a key indicator at a 100,000 foot level of the real estate market and our, our position in that supply and demand. The good news also is that economic development still remains a highly relational industry. Fortunately, still people make decisions about their company. Robots and computers have not yet taken that over, so for the time being, humans are making decisions, and business leaders want to locate in communities where people are valued and cared about. Yes, companies are focused on profit, but the it factor in having that sense of community is still very important when we talk to, to business leaders about why they've chosen to locate in Scottsdale. In order to share the Scottsdale message with current and prospective business leaders, we focus on people and collaborative events. So far this year, we've already executed several events, including the Mayor and Council Breakfast, where we welcomed a new company to Scottsdale, General Assembly, the seventh annual Cure Corridor event, and last week, one of our, our key events, which is a business attraction event, and a target market, which is San Francisco for us, we executed a business attraction event. Talent is, is, continues to be a driving factor, and our talent attraction efforts are getting stronger by the, by the week. We have placed this banner above Scottsdale Road, and they're getting noticed quite a bit. For the second consecutive year, Scottsdale has been named the number one city in the country to get a job. As the number one factor of company locates continues to be the availability of high quality labor, this des designation validates our efforts and that Scottsdale is the place 
to grow your career. And the, mar our marketing efforts, a great deal of what we do has to do with messaging. How do we plant seeds of uh, this is a place to work and to grow your community? We do that a great deal through marketing and social media. We are the proud winners this past year of an international a multimedia promotion from the International Economic Development Council. And we've changed our social media tactics to try and pivot and make sure that we're reaching our right, the correct audience. By tweaking our content, we've seen a 21% increase in Facebook and a 42% increase in LinkedIn. We currently have 8,000 followers on LinkedIn. And just yesterday, we found out that we are the number two in the state of Arizona with LinkedIn followers of those who have a municipal page. We're behind a city to the west called Phoenix. So this is a really good thing. 103% increase in just 30 days. That is, uh, that's good news for Scottsdale. It means we're reaching our target audience on a regular basis. In addition to the number one job designation, there's other accolades we've received. In addition, we've been named as the, the best untapped city for a startup, global city of the year, number one place in the country to locate to, and one of America's safest cities. Okay, so I've taken you through the past year. Now we can go ahead and let go of that slingshot and look forward a little bit. So we've prob you've probably seen this campaign a little bit. We just launched it a few weeks ago. This is a teaser campaign that is designed to generate interest about Scottsdale as a place to grow your career and business. We've splattered these words, you could be at Waste Management Open, uh, this, the Scottsdale sp uh, Spring Training Facility out in Wright Field, just under the Charo Lodge, if you take a look at that. And I'm happy to tell you that, uh, don't share this with anybody, if any of our competitors in the room, we're taking this campaign to Chicago for the entire month of May. We're gonna have these messages on billboards, at uh, uh, airports, any place we can capture your eyes, you're gonna see this campaign. Chicago continues to be one of our target markets for companies and, and talent that are leaving that market due to a variety of, I'll say, state and local factors. Um, uh, but the idea here is to capture the interest. Don't do it now, but hopefully today, go to youcouldbe.net and find out what we're conveying as to why Scottsdale should be a place for you to grow your career and grow your company. We're placing these ads in prominent locations, and I think we're getting some notice from some very prominent people up there, and, and I think you can see that on the screen, and people are taking notice, and so I think we're, we're hitting it out of the park, pun intended. All right, so in terms of trade secrets, uh, I don't wanna give away too much again, but we are currently tracking 36 active projects in economic development with a pipeline of 3,000 jobs. If we are successful in locating these 36 companies, that would equate to $100 million of new capital investment in Scottsdale, 1.4 million square feet of Class A real estate either absorbed or created, and technology continues to be the prominent factor in our, our company locates. One third of those prospects are in the technology environment. We're continuing to analyze trends, um, uh, foreign direct investment and venture capital movements are impacting technology companies in their decision. Venture capital, where the funding is coming from, is driving technology decisions. And we typically see that in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're putting Scottsdale on the map for this is a place where you can get venture capital investment. Labor availability and real, real estate costs will continue to drive company decisions. And this is a very highly com competitive industry. So not only are we analyzing what we're doing in the Phoenix Scottsdale metro area, we're also analyzing our competitors. We have local competitors, so we're constantly analyzing where they sit in with trends, and those are competitors that are around the country. So we're constantly analyzing where we're fitting within those and making adjustments in those markets. And finally, we continue to analyze trends in, in our target industries of advanced business services, technology, bio life science, hospitality, and higher education. So Scottsdale is still a relatively young community at 69 years since we've been incorporated. But near, as we near community build out, the focus on developing a strong, stable, and diverse economy remains as strong as ever. You're gonna hear from Randy Grant in, in, here in a few minutes who will talk more about some of the development projects that are coming on. But if you've seen cranes in the sky lately, that's a really good thing for economic development. Nationwide, is, Realty Investment is building Cavison at Hayden, the 101. Stocktail Capital, uh, Scottsdale Capital Marquee in downtown, which is the first 
Class A office in downtown since 2012. And Skyson and McDowell, just to name a few, are bringing much needed office and mixed use projects to Scottsdale. Class A real estate is in demand and these projects will help keep vacancy rates in very competitive ranges. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, Scottsdale's strategic efforts in the strategic plan was approved five years ago. I am pleased to share that we are positioning ourselves to take an updated look at our strategic plan. And while industry standards still suggest that five years is an appropriate time frame for a community to develop a strategic plan, we are gonna start an initiative to look at three years. Our economy is changing at a rapid pace and we need to be nimble and be able to pivot quickly. So we're gonna be looking at a much shorter plan. Many of you in this room are part of developing our current plan and over the next six to eight months, I look forward to working with each and every one of you, our business community, and shaping what Scottsdale's economic development future will look like over the next three years. Thank you again to the Scottsdale Area Chamber for pulling this event together. Each of you plays a critical role in our community. You're our ambassadors of economic development, and you all play a direct or indirect role in driving people and companies to our, our city and our economy. Make sure you please stay connected with us on our, on our social media networks and visit us online. And please have a great Scottsdale day. I'm pleased to introduce our next speaker, which is Randy Grant. Randy Grant is the Community and Economic Development Executive Director. And he asked if he could come down the stairs, but for liability reasons, they said he cannot do that. So uh, please welcome Randy Grant. Thank you very much, good morning. Um, I too would like to thank the, uh, the present and past uh, council members that are here and the present and past uh, board and commission members that are here. It's uh, these decisions that they made that have led us to this exciting time and it's a pleasure to be here to talk to you about some of those development projects. Um, Rob and I flipped a coin before this and, and decided that he would present the stylish, innovative, fresh, PowerPoint presentation, and I would do one that looks like it was done around the turn of the century. And there it is, straight from 1995. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the development projects that are uh, in the planning stages or under construction. Really exciting times. A lot of hotel development. We didn't have a, a new hotel in downtown since the W was under construction in 19, or in 2004. So the amount of hotel construction and activity that we see in downtown and outside of downtown is truly exciting. Uh, as you know, hotel is one of those things that brings in tourists, that generates tax dollars, that supports the goods and services uh, that uh, we provide. There are nine new hotels that are either approved under construction or in the planning stages in the southern part of the community, particularly in the downtown area. And there are four more that are in the planning stages in other parts of the community. I'll give you an idea of some of those. In the downtown, there is the uh, addition water view, which is on the north of the W Hotel. It is in the planning stages. It's expected that they want to break ground by, uh, by late summer. Um, the second is Don and Charlie's, the old Don and Charlie's site, which is currently under construction. And um, as with all of these projects, you're going to see the construction, you're also going to experience some inconveniences based solely on the fact that they can't do utility work without some street construction and, and interruption. So uh, keep that in mind. Once it's over, it is a, a huge economic part of the community. The Winfield Hotel is, is the site of the old uh, uh, Scottsdale Area Chamber uh, Association of Realtors. Sorry. Um, Canopy is under construction at First Street and Marshall Way. You can go by and see the activity there. Museum Square was recently approved and the hotel that's located just south of the Museum of the West uh, is planned for construction sometime to start next year. South Bank, um, Carter Unger, you'll see him a little bit later. The, the hotel that is on the site that he has proposed um, is in the planning stages and the Caesar site, you may have seen the announcement for the groundbreaking um, and th that is going to be under construction shortly. In addition, the Element 
at Sky Song was completed. It is now operational, and the hotel at the Papago Plaza Center uh, is under uh, is, is under review for plans right now, and we're expecting them to get underway soon. Uh, this is a rendition of the addition at, Water, at Waterview, 246 rooms. Uh, it actually spans across 73rd Street. We'll be directly south of the W Hotel. Don and Charlie's is 181 rooms. The Winfield, 244 rooms. The canopy, as you can see, 178 rooms. Museum Square, the star indicates where the hotel is located. It's just south of and sharing a plaza with the Museum of the West. And this gives you an indication of the plaza area and the hotel uh, in the evening, the rendition of the in the evening and during the day. Um, should be a big generator for traffic for the museum and for all of the businesses on the west side of Scottsdale Road. Element at Sky Song, again, is, uh, is completed, and they're currently operational. Uh, Sky Song is also adding their, uh, I think it's the fifth or sixth phase of office development uh, that's going to be coming in soon. Very, very successful uh, project, getting a lot of, of tech and innovation groups participating and officing there. This is one that's outside of downtown. This is the DC Ranch. Uh, hotel, 125 rooms, it's a Fairfield Marriott. Cavasson is a property that's located uh, north and west of Hayden and the 101. It's 130 acres, and it's over a million square feet of office, retail, hotel, uh, and residential development. This is the Hilton that's currently in for development review approval. Um, which will be north of the headquarters for Nationwide, located at the southeast corner of the site. Choice Hotel headquarters that is located there uh, east of the Nationwide headquarters, so a lot of activity in that area, and they are moving very, very quickly. The Nationwide headquarters is coming out of the ground. The garage is out of the ground. Um, really exciting opportunity for a kind of a mixed-use project north of the air park. As Rob mentioned, the marquee in downtown is the first Class A office we've had in some time. It's at uh, Scottsdale Road in Schumann. The site has been cleared and fenced, and they are in for permits right now. A couple of other projects that are underway, Entrada, which is the old auto mall at 64th and McDowell, uh, 30 acres, is in for development review currently 750 residential units and a quarter of a million square feet of office and retail. Um, it'd be nice, it'll be nice to see something other than those vacant properties there that have been there for a couple of decades now. And Papago Plaza was recently raised to make way for a hotel, uh, residential, uh, four restaurant pads and a grocery store. And they are also uh, in development review at the current time. A lot of exciting things are happening in Scottsdale, um, a lot of activity. It's kind of staggering to see after the recession, the community come out so strong, but it is a tribute to the people that are in this room and the people that are out promoting Scottsdale every day. So thank you for making it happen. Thank you. Clearly, there is a lot of activity going on in Scottsdale, and uh, we've seen a great representation today, and I'd like to thank Rob Millar and his team. It's such a professional group, outstanding work on behalf of the, the residents, and uh, I'm very proud to work with them, and Randy Grant and his leadership, also the entire leadership at the city of Scottsdale, Jim Thompson and our elected leadership. It's a, it's a pleasure to be partners with them moving forward. So we've seen now uh, where we are we've seen some of the dynamic programs that, uh, projects and programs that we're seeing come online in the city of Scottsdale. Uh, no more vibrant discussion than the subject of development. So now we're gonna start looking ahead to see what's, no pun intended, but cooking, um, coming for Scottsdale. What, 
what do we want to be? Where are we going and how will we get there? I'm very honored to, uh, to uh, introduce uh, Grady Gamage Jr. to you. Uh, Grady is uh, one of the founders of Gamage and Burnham and he has a varied and diverse history of over 40 years um, of public policy and leadership in law in Arizona. Uh, for 25 years, he's been one of the more sought after speakers in Arizona, covering topics uh, regularly on urban growth, regulation, local politics, environment, sustainability, transportation, tax policy, and importantly, demographic changes. Grady is the author of two acclaimed books in the Phoenix metropolitan area and is a frequent uh, panelist and discussion on NPR, uh, PBS Horizon. He's quoted in The Economist, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Times, Newsweek, and other notable publications and online outlets. It is an honor to present to you Grady Gamage Jr. Well, good morning. Um, it's my pleasure to be here uh, on Super Tuesday with all of you in Super Scottsdale um, on the set of The Honeymooners. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, we're actually a little ahead of schedule, so if I seem to ramble occasionally, it's, you know, like the guys on the TV news do when they're trying to fill the time. Um, so um, I want to actually take you back all the way to 2003. Um, we um, earlier um, heard about the uh, economic development plan from 2015 and what's gone on since then. But this is a report that the Morrison Institute did in 2003. Now, I didn't actually work on this report. Mary Jo Waits did this report. Mary Jo is back in town and around and, and uh, doing consulting gigs for people. This was called Which Way Scottsdale? And it was done at a point in time at which there was a sense that Scottsdale faced some very critical decisions about its future. Uh, and it was an influential report. I, how many of you were part of this report or were at least here at the time or have seen it? Yeah, fair, about half maybe. Um, well, it raised a series of questions about the future of Scottsdale. And there was this sense that in 2003, Scottsdale was at a transition point from the old days, from uh, the art galleries and tourism into potentially something more happening by way of employment and development and growth. And there was a sense of tension between that growth, density, height, sound familiar, um, and what was already here. So these were some of the questions that the Morrison Institute asked at the time. How can Scottsdale retain and enhance its great quality of place? How can Scottsdale shape its niche in a new era? Three Scottsdales I'll talk about in a minute. How can it play with 360 degree vision? And how will can-do Scottsdale get past its Stopsdale reputation? That one I'm going to come back to too. So this was, I think, the first time this notion of the three Scottsdales was presented. And it was a look at what is a fairly unusual geography for a city of this size. Uh, very uh, long and skinny, basically. And the three Scottsdales were South Scottsdale, what, which we think of as Old Town and the traditional uh, part of Scottsdale. Central Scottsdale is the air park. I remember as somebody who grew up in um, Tempe primarily, being shocked when I read this report and found out that the air park was the center of Scottsdale. That still kind of shocks me a little bit, uh, but at this point, Central Scottsdale and the air park was emerging as the second largest employment center in the valley. Uh, only downtown Phoenix out to the airport has more jobs than that part of Central Scottsdale. And then North Scottsdale is, you know, up there in the mountains and the desert and all of that stuff, north of the CAP Canal is what is considered North Scottsdale in this report. And the question that the report raised is, what does this mean? Can these three different geographies and different demographies of people who live in these areas come together and operate as a coherent city, or is this kind of destined to fracture in some way? This is a chart I particularly like. Now, it's going to be hard for you to read, but it's an upside-down S. And as you know, when you fly a flag upside down, it indicates distress, concern, um, alarm. And that's why it was used this way. And the point was that Scottsdale at two, in 2003 had something of a history 
of careening from a sort of can-do, we can get it done image, the Indian bend wash, for example, uh, to an anti-development, fractious, um, uh, very controversial Scottsdale, termed here Stopsdale, in which um, things were not getting done. And that the community had a tendency to careen from one of those extremes to another, from being very pro-growth, very focused on achieving things, making things happen, building on the legacy of the past, creating an exciting future, to then reacting and feeling like, eh, maybe we're not quite ready for that much change and that much happening. And that's what the S-curve was intended to represent in 2003. So Morrison came back and looked at this in 2010, and this was just a quick look at Scottsdale. It didn't have all the background demographic data and analysis. It was much shorter, and it was done for the chamber for a retreat setting. Um, in 2010, and I remember being at this retreat. Again, how many of you were at the 2010 retreat where we looked at this, do you remember? Yeah, Virginia, you're just gonna raise your hand on everything, aren't you, yeah. Uh, um, and this was sort of an update between 2003 and 2010. The thing I the most remember about this retreat was one of the heavily debated items at that point in Scottsdale was whether or not it was beneficial for Scottsdale to be marketed as part of Metro Phoenix, whether or not we should use the term Metro Phoenix rather than Valley of the Sun. This was a larger dialogue in the, in the metropolitan area, uh, a feeling that Valley of the Sun really didn't communicate, people thought it was in Idaho, uh, you know, it was, it was a confusing moniker, and that big cities use the name of the big city to market their area. Well, I remember a prominent Scottsdale um, activist in this retreat saying, well, that would be a horrible mistake for Scottsdale because Phoenix doesn't mean anything. But you can walk into, this is literally the quote, any village in Africa and they know about Scottsdale. <laughs> this seems to me emblematic of another uh, moniker that is used for Scottsdale, not Stopsdale, but Smugsdale uh, that is occasionally referred to. Well, this was the look at what was happening in 2010. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about, go back to 2003 and think about today and all that has happened. And in so many ways, this is a great story for Scottsdale. Amazing things have happened. This feeling in 2003 that Scottsdale might be heading into resting on its laurels and not achieving a lot of things and not seizing on the opportunities, we clearly got beyond that. We clearly did a good job. So this is just some of the stuff that happened since 2003. And there's, there's so much of it, I'll try to not hit the button too often. Uh, obviously, uh, the waterfront, both sides uh, of the canal, uh, Jeff and Carter are here and can talk about some of that and some of what else has happened. And they, I love the art stuff in the canal. I think that is the best use of the canal we've come up with yet. Um, in, in the valley, trying to figure out how to capitalize on them. Uh, Camel View Village, one of the most uh, interesting uh, uh, higher density residential projects anywhere in the metropolitan area. Sky Song, obviously, if you go back to 2003, that was just on the heels of all the hockey stuff. And uh, in, in, in the 2003 report, this part of Scottsdale is actually referred to as Los Arcos, uh, a, a, a name, you know, us old timers, remember, I remember when Los Arcos opened. I remember riding my bicycle from Tempe to Los Arcos Mall because it was gonna, it was so cool to eat at Pancho's Mexican Buffet. Uh, this was a high point uh, for me. Um, well, obviously, Sky Song, I will tell you candidly, I was a bit of a skeptic about Sky Song. Uh, it has been more successful than I ever thought it would be, and it is a really cool thing and a, and a great thing for this community. Uh, Scottsdale Quarter, obviously capitalizing on the success across the street in Phoenix of Kirland Commons, uh, which everybody who goes there thinks is in Scottsdale, but Phoenix counts the sales tax money and doesn't really care what those people think. Uh, <laughs> Um, Talking Stick Resort, obviously uh, the things that have happened next door on the uh, Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community, Salt River Fields, and uh, Arizona Boardwalk. 
um, lots of new kinds of tourist attractions uh, for Scottsdale. Uh, and the Museum of the West, um, uh, again, uh, a, a spectacular addition to the community. This, this is a big deal, these things that have happened since 2003. And they are evidence, I think, if we went back and really revisited that report, Which Way Scottsdale, we would feel positive about many of the choices that have been made. Um, this one, some of you may feel positive and some of you may not about how many multifamily units have been built. The community is becoming more dense. Um, this is, I think, the interior of the Tom Scott. Uh, everything has to have a single catchy name. It's either two words run together or is somebody's name. The Olivia, you know, the Stephanie, the, the, the Carter, uh, you know. Who, there's all of these complexes, and there's a lot of them, and they're very nice, and they're very expensive. Um, and the biggest thing in many ways that I think Scottsdale should take pride in and has done really well, and in 2003 it wasn't clear that this could happen. The, the funding wasn't secure. There was a lot of land yet to be acquired, and here it is. It's been a huge success and a, a major addition to the community. Okay, so what didn't happen after 2003? What happened, but happened somewhere else? Uh, well, let's look at some of those. Obviously, here's one. We ended with um, the, uh, the mountain preserves. Um, this became a real flashpoint. This became a division point for the community. Uh, a, a vicious, uh, protracted, um, and uh, uh, important battle, um, and it didn't wind up happening. So there's one that um, didn't occur. Um, here's another that didn't occur. This wasn't a, as much a battle in the community as it just never really reared its head because of sort of a general feeling that, well, light rail, that's not for Scottsdale. Um, I think that's the wrong decision. Uh, I'll be candid with you about that, but I, under I understand it. But it's had a major impact on the metropolitan area and certainly on uh, downtown Phoenix area. And this slide I like because it has both ASU and light rail in it, which have been transformative. Um, Marina Heights, uh, the largest single private development in the history of the state, um, didn't happen in Scottsdale. Now you're getting nationwide, not quite this scale, but a, a, an important addition to the community. This is massive. This is an unbelievable thing that happened and has spurred more development uh, along the edge of the Tempe Town Light. And I think many ways the biggest thing that's happened since 2003 is downtown Phoenix actually became a place. Um, I have worked in downtown Phoenix since 1967, uh, and it was never interesting until about five years ago. Uh, it was never worth being in. It was kind of a, it was, however, easy to get in and out of. There was no traffic. All of a sudden, there's a lot of traffic. This is just a sign at Roosevelt Row. But, but the success of downtown Phoenix finally came because of small things, not because of big sports arenas, but because of lots of small development on Roosevelt Row and because of the combination of light rail and ASU actually putting people on the street. So um, those of you who went to the ULI Trends Day last week, Jeff, I think I saw you there, this is kind of what everybody's talking in the real estate world, uh, is talking about um, what, what's going to happen in the future of real estate and how do we deal with this. And the, the message I want you to get from this is that this is called Scottsdale Forward. Cities only move forward. Even if a city falls into... Uh, a less successful path, it's still a forward path. Um, cities are by their nature um, organic, living, breathing um, uh, um, uh, things that, um, that grow and change and go forward. Back to this. It feels to me like we're a little bit in this same position again today. Now, it's different. Lots of things have happened. The community has changed greatly since 2003. And, and yet, for a variety of reasons, we're at this sort of choice point. Um, I wanted to pause at the end of, of the presentation to talk a little bit about, um, since we have extra time, guys, just cool it, um, about the way we make decisions about the growth of cities in Arizona and why so many of them tend to be so contentious. Um, and I wanted to show a picture of the general plan just because we hoped, back in the early 2000s, we passed two pieces of state legislation, Growing Smarter and Growing Smarter Plus. And this was in response to the Sierra Club's proposal to put growth boundaries around all cities. 
And the reason we put those two pieces of legislation in place was to try to move us beyond the strict ad hoc one development project at a time decision making that we've tended to live with in Arizona. To try to create more of a framework for deciding how cities grow. It's pretty much been a failure in my view. Um, I was sort of involved in, in the drafting of those things initially. You don't have a general plan that the voters have approved. You tried once and they turned it down. Then you tried again and the city council didn't even adopt it. Now, there's no consequence to that. This was probably not the best idea in the world to have the citizenry vote on a general plan because it's very complicated. But it was a way to try to shift the dialogue from individual development projects to larger vision for the city. So I, I, I just want to briefly talk about why I think it failed and why development decisions still tend to be so contentious in Arizona. Three reasons related to all Arizona cities and then three reasons particularly related to Scottsdale. Arizona in general, the first is that this is a high growth place. So we have lots of decisions coming down the pike. We tend to operate a boom and bust economy. And so in the boom times, we have lots of fights. And in the, bu bu in the bust times, we worry. Um, and it means that we make lots of decisions, but it also means we have a lot of newcomers who don't have much background, who don't have much context for the way things have happened in the past. Second trend that applies to all Arizona cities is the tradition, the strong tradition of private property rights. Uh, Prop 206, the Goldwater Institute. I think it's interesting when we talk about conservatives in the land use area. Conservative means you don't like change, but it also means you believe in private property rights. Those two things are usually in conflict. And the third reason is that we make all our decisions in a legislative decision-making way. Um, that means that they're made by city councils, there aren't any standards surrounding them, it involves lobbying, and it involves referenda. That's not a good formula for consistent, balanced decision-making. Three reasons I think are more specifically related to Scottsdale and why things here tend to be contentious. The first is the geography we talked about before, the three Scottsdales, the fractured nature, the fact that people can live so far away from the downtown. They don't really feel like they're in Scottsdale, they kind of think they're in Carefree. Um, the second, uh, and, and, and maybe you still don't operate a districted city council system. I'm not saying you should. I, I think it's a very complicated equation. But it has a different impact on the way people relate to their city, whether they have a councilman that they think is their councilman. The second thing about Scottsdale is that you have a lot to lose. You have a lot to protect. You have a lot of things that have been done right and that have been made this place special. And so you worry about it and you feel more invested in it. And the third thing is you got a lot of rich people. Um, and that's, you know, it, it, that's a good thing. Uh, but it means you have a lot of affluent people with time on their hands that want to argue about nearly everything. <laughs> and, and, and God knows you're really good at it. Um, so it, it, that all of those things, I, I think, are, um, are part of the complexity of a place like Scottsdale. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. And thank you, Grady. So... Clearly, what we just did is we brought a lot of cooks into the kitchen to look at what might be the best recipe for Scottsdale moving forward. And there's no one tried or true recipe. It takes consideration, it takes compromise, and it takes some foresight. Ultimately, these decisions will be made by the leaders and the residents of Scottsdale, and no more important uh, than the election coming up this year. So please pay attention as we go into the uh, election cycle, and, and I appreciate the panelists for being here. I'd like to also thank our sponsors one more time very much for their uh, gracious hospitality and their sponsorship. Without you, this would not be possible. So thank you all very much for that. I'd also like to take a moment and thank the Scottsdale Forward Planning Committee for their time and their hard work, their dedication, and their insight. I really do appreciate uh, all the work that they did to make today uh, special and come together. And then thank you to the chamber team, the staff that has worked so diligently uh, every day, uh, but today very early at the crack of dawn to be here and to make sure that the morning went well. So thank you to the chamber staff and the volunteers that helped out today, and, uh, and thank you very much for that. And also a special shout out to the uh, Scottsdale Forward Chair, uh, Renee Higgs. Thank you very much, Renee, and Sheree Valentino 
Aquino, Vice President of the Chamber, for all the hard work and insight for today as well. Uh, on behalf of the Scottsdale Area Chamber Board of Directors, our staff and our, and our member uh, stakeholders, I want to thank the Scottsdale Community College for their uh, hospitality. Uh, thank the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community for, for hosting us and all of our sponsors. And we are going to have coffee and, uh, and uh, mingling and networking to continue this discussion. You know, when I was backstage here and we were listening to Grady and the panel, I was, I was seeing the audience and I saw a lot of uh, head nods and head shakes and uh, chatting. And I, I think that's, that's what the point of today is, is to create a dialogue, to create discussion. And uh, as we wrap up this morning's presentation and you go to the networking, the one thing that I will leave you with is that today was thoughtful, it was respectful, and it was informative. Have a great day. Thank you.